Alrighty guys, what's up? Welcome to playoffs preview number one for the Noxus division. This will be our first one that we'll be um, talking a little bit about. Plan is to break down uh, each finals, quarterfinals, and um, semifinals matchup uh, before they happen. So uh, people from the other division and, and those who aren't following the Noxus division can uh, check out and see what our playoffs are all about and get a feel for each of these teams and uh, and get to hear from them a little bit. So. Uh, today we'll be breaking down the four five seed quarterfinals matchup. Um, four seed is Apes Together Strong, and the seed number five is Ebro. So they'll be going um, head to head, and it's going to be on Monday. We're recording this here on Tuesday, the 13th. Uh, so they're going to be playing on Monday, the 20 or the 19th. So a few days away. So I thought I'd break this down. I've got um, Apes Together Strong's jungler randomonium joining me how are you doing rando i'm doing good how are you pretty well thank you so if we haven't really set the parameters or defined rivalry but if there is a noxus division seal rivalry by any kind of definition i would consider mm -hmm. this it you and ebros right yeah this is definitely one of the big rivalries that we have in noxus division so last season uh the finals was ebros versus apes get their strong uh, Ebros took that two to one uh, in the regular season uh, last season. We went one and one in the regular season. And then this season, uh, week one, we played against them and we also went one and one. So we're basically, what, four and three is the, the record between us. Uh, yeah. And I think that the fact that we were one and two last season and this season going into playoffs, we're the number four, the number five seed just shows how much stronger the Noxian division has gotten just over a single season. Yeah, and and at the beginning of the season, you guys were running a relatively similar roster to last season, um, mm -hmm. I think with the exception of ADC, and we'll kind of get to the roster changes as we move forward. Is that correct? Yeah, roughly. Um, I definitely At the beginning of the season, I was playing support, and uh, Cyanite was playing jungle. Um, so now I'm back to my main role of jungle, and Cyanite is back to his main role of mid. Um, so we definitely had some roster shuffles and some lane or some positional swaps around uh, from the beginning of the season, and it's kind of weird because the last time we saw Ebros was week one. So both teams have had a lot of time to evolve and change their strategies, and we've seen not only positional swaps but also just straight up roster swaps. Yeah, and speaking of that, uh, Ebros has kept a consistent roster this entire season, and I'm. I want to say with the exception of like one person at the most, maybe they've kept the exact same roster over last season. So they've been, um, their roster has been very consistent the entire, this entire season and last, um, which is kind of rare to see uh, in CL. A lot of teams do pull off a lot of off-season roster moves. There are teams coming in, teams going out, but these guys have stayed consistent. You guys, on the other hand, um, when you played your week one match, you had three different players than mm -hmm. when you're going to go into playoffs to face these guys. So... Um, Scattercat was your ADC. Um, it is now Slavic Goon. Stepped in a couple weeks ago. Um, top lane was who's playing top lane? Di Captain no. Goose was Captain was top Goose. lane. That's right. Yeah, and now it's Blaney. Now it's Blaney. Uh, you started out the season as support. You're now in jungle. Support is now mm -hmm. um, Unc or uh, ABCDEFF at fifteen. Who if, yep. you do, if you don't recognize the uh, excessively long. Um, winded summoner name that is uncle's alone time from last season he played on played on ats that last is, season uh, was their support that is there correct. Yep. um and diving was the mid laner and uh he left a couple of weeks ago and so cyanite swapped um from jungle to mid as you took his jungle spot um mm -hmm. so yeah it's been a whirlwind for you guys and uh for you and cyanite who are the last two standing members on the roster how has it been accommodating the, all of these changes. I bet it's been like tough to accommodate, but I mean, some strengths and weaknesses um, really on both sides. Yeah, it's been definitely a, a drama-filled season so far. Um, we definitely had all sorts of issues, which is why you saw both me and Cyanite not in our main roles at the beginning of the season. Uh, we definitely had a lot of uh, team discussions that ended up resulting in three people leaving. Um, some more planned than others <laughs> and we ended up having to call back uncle to reprise his starting role uh, and then we also had to uh lean on slava goon and blaney to come in to help us at the end of the season um but in general i think that the team 
that we have right now is probably the strongest roster we've ever fielded. We haven't had that much time to gel, but just mechanically, I think that these players are extremely talented. Uh, and I'm basically my role on the team is just trying to herd the cats and try and make sure that we we meet our objective timers and do our macro as cleanly as we do all of our micro. How have Blaney and Slavic Goon adjusted to this type of competitive style? I know that um, Uncle played in, in the league before and is um, seemed to mesh with the team then, and I'm sure it still does now. Um, but how have the two two players, did, have, did they come from a competitive-ish background? I don't know if, I mean, I, I call us competitive, a SEAL competitive in a sense. Um, <laughs> but, you know, not maybe not having come from that background, how have they um, worked themselves into a SEAL-type atmosphere? They've blended in really, really well. I feel like they they basically uh, come with some pretty strong mechanical skills. Um, I think that they haven't really focused too much on the macro side of the game yet, or the you know the drafting, scouting strategy that you get with uh, with Seal and things like that. So we're trying to uh, kind of bring them into that world. But they've generally have been very kind of upbeat and open to uh, ideas and open to criticism. And it definitely has been kind of like a really welcome change of pace to just kind of have a much more relaxed team atmosphere. Mm, yeah, I hear that. Back, kind of getting back to the matchup a little bit, how much stock um, or how much of your preparation do, would you um, do you lean at all on your knowledge from your week one match? Like if any at all? I mean, you got like we just talked about, you guys are running three different players. How much mm -hmm. information are you going to use from that week one match? Or are you kind of starting over um, from scratch and applying what you now know um, to who you think Ebros is now? I mean, I think we have a general idea of who Ebros, um, who they, how they function as a team. Um, they are very bot-centric. If you look at all of their stats, mm -hmm. Dufranga is definitely the number one carry on their team. Um, and I think that regardless of uh, who they put in what position, like right now, it seems like they've, um, swapped their jungle and their top laner. So it looks like right now on the current roster, they got Potato Fist in top lane and Scrambles in jungle, and that kind of matches up with their match history as well. Uh, Potato, Potato Fist has been playing a lot of top lane, and uh, Scrambles has been playing a lot of jungle. Um, but they are a bot-centric team, so we're going in with uh, basically saying, like, hey, we, we already know this team. It doesn't matter if they swap a few people around. I think their identity is still the same, and we know what our identity is. And I think that, that actually gives us a... a uh, a leg up because nobody knows what our team identity is and mm -hmm. we're going to hopefully come out and surprise the people in playoffs. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. The advantage of having them almost play versus a team they've never seen before, right? With the exception of you and Cyanite, who are now in different roles. So all five moving parts of your roster are different than where they were when they played in week one. So it's essentially as if they're playing against a new team while you have seen these guys play for several seasons now. Um, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of people really underestimate the value of familiarity with teams mm -hmm. and you can just kind of in the back of your mind, even if you're not thinking and, and intentionally applying your knowledge of that team, like out loud in game, sometimes you pick up habits in the back of your mind while, um, having played this team so many times and you can apply that. So I definitely agree with the advantage that you guys have gained there. Um, when it comes to preparation for this matchup, you you kind of called out their bot lane as something um, a strong uh, force through which their team likes to operate. Is you guys' tendency, I guess maybe yours in particular, and I'm not sure who else um, does most of the strategy and or scouting and or pick banning. Is your tendency to attack that type of strength through draft, or is it through gameplay, or is it a little bit of both? It's probably a little bit of both. We, we basically, um, I kind of lead the strategy discussion um, and come up with like an initial plan that I think that we want to execute. And we usually come up with a bunch of different plans. We'll practice a few. We'll discuss a few. We'll try and figure out what are the pros and cons of each and which ones we think have the, the greatest likelihood of success. Uh, and then obviously we'll adapt in-game. We'll adapt between games to try and uh, figure out what's the best way to crack you know, the nut and get the win, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, without going too much into what we're planning on our strategy, we look at both the best players on a team and the worst players on a team. And we try to identify, well, is it more important for us to try and knock down the best portion of their team down a peg? Or is it better for us to kind of isolate the weakest link on their team and try sure. to exploit that? Sure. For Ebros, what, who do you think is the player 
and or what um, what part of the map do you think is going to pose a problem for you guys in this series? Yeah, it's definitely got to be bot lane. I mean, their bot lane was the difference maker when we played them in the finals um, last season, and their bot lane was the difference maker in the game that they beat us in week one as well. And I, I'm saying that as playing as the support mm -hmm. in week one. I definitely think that their bot lane uh, beat our bot lane in game in week one of the season. Um, so we definitely have to contain their bot lane, make sure that their bot lane doesn't run away with the game. Uh, clearly, they, they definitely can play through other roles. They can play through mid, they can play through jungle, they can play through top. They're an all-around pretty good team, but definitely the scariest aspect of their team is their bot lane. Are Devranga and Gid, Gid Shade Slayer um, aggressive in lane? Do they create their own advantages in lane? Or are they just the type of players who will pick um, a wise lane matchup and scale and always be a threat no matter how much pressure you put on them. What what how how do they usually create their leads? They tend to be pretty aggressive in lane. Uh they okay. they will go after they'll draft ranged uh supports if the opposing team picks melee supports, try to go for poke and kill lanes, things like that. Uh they don't tend to play too passive. Um and then obviously they call for a lot of jungle attention and if they can get mid priority they will roam with their mid laner or look for TP plays with their top laner. Mm. Nice. For your team, who do you think is the win condition uh, prior to draft? Because uh, obviously draft, um, you can you can change that up or switch up the plan there. Um, but before um, before draft and you know six days before this whole thing happens, what strength in your team do you think Ebros will not be able to handle? I think the biggest uh, disparity we have is either in top lane or mid lane. Okay. Um, I think a lot of people are sleeping on how good Blaney is. And uh, Cyanide has been putting an immense amount of games. He is ranked up considerably. He's playing some of the best I've ever seen him play. Uh, and I played with him for three seasons now. So he's really at the top of his game, and he's highly motivated coming into uh, playoffs. Sweet. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of um, Invictus Gaming um, back a couple of years ago, or the, the last two years before this year when they were really dominant. Um, at international performances, every analyst going into their games would say, well, these guys are a very solo lane centric team. Like Jackie Love can go even at ADC. He can pick a good matchup. He can scale, but it's really about rookie and the shy. And then when you had the mm -hmm. matchup against Team Liquid in the 2018 MSI, um, the whole discussion was, well, are, is a solo lane focused team going to be stronger than a bot lane focused team? Because at the time, um, Doublelift and uh, Core JJ were the the powerhouse for Team Liquid. So kind of reminds me mm -hmm. of that series. And and I think based on how you've described both of these teams' um, powerhouses or unique strengths before draft even starts, I feel like that's the kind of clash we're going to get here. Can you play through top? Can you play through bot? What Right now, what do you think the meta favors? Like the, the, think... no, the spe seal specific Noxus competitive meta, I should say. I think the meta is very mid-centric. If okay. you look at, I would say mid and top centric. If you look at the top two teams in Noxus Division, they have very strong mid and top lane. Mm, yes. Um, and we, we've, at least in the games that we've lost, it's usually been that we, we've lost through mid or top. Uh, see, it feels like if we lose uh, pressure in mid lane, then you can't be aggressive in bot lane because mid lane has can roam. Sure. Uh, and if you lose top lane, top lane gains such a massive amount of gold and EXP that if they start snowballing and they're able to start stealing jungle camps, that it becomes near impossible to even 1v2 a fed top laner uh, in this mm -hmm. meta, especially considering the junglers took a little bit of an EXP nerf. And obviously bot lane, uh, the solo, uh, or sorry, the duo EXP is uh, not as powerful as it used to be. Yeah. Do you guys think Ebros puts up a fight, or do you, do you guys 2-0 him on Monday? I think that they'll put up a fight. Um, as far as a 2-0 or a 2-1, I think that I'm leaning more towards a 2-0 rather than a 2-1, just because I don't think that they're going to keep up, be able to keep up with the mechanical prowess of our uh, both our top laner, our mid laner, and even our new bot laner. They're all incredibly mechanically ta talented. And then we have me and, un or me and Uncle are basically the backup and more of the macro side of the game. We focus on the macro shot calling. Nice. Covering all your bases there. Well, thank you, Rando, for joining us. That is the Apes Together Strong versus Ebro's playoff preview. Uh, they're going to be playing on Monday the 19th. Um, don't, uh, don't hesitate to check 
on that game when it gets casted, um, probably after the fact, because um, everybody knows that these two teams, whenever they clash, it's going to be a banger. So thanks, Randa, for joining us, and um, that'll do it for our first uh, playoff preview. Thank you.